What is up, boys, girls, and everyone else? Jane's back here, and today we're going to be back with some more Series 8 content. Today, I'll be ranking all the restricted Pokemon in Series 8 VGC 21. If you don't know, in 2019, I did pretty well in a restricted format. Two regional championship wins, uh, two international, actually three international cuts, including one win and one finalist appearance, as well as third place at that world championship that year. And yeah, I'll be giving some insight to like all my opinions about the restricted Pokemon and tiering them even. And normally I don't like doing tier lists. However, I feel like with restricted Pokemon is usually an exception because most teams are actually centered around that restricted Pokemon. And usually you can tell by usage stats like how accurately a restricted Pokemon will do. Of course, this is all opinions. This is my opinion personally. Might not be your opinion. And let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree with placements and what your tier list would potentially look like. And of course, if you will enjoy this video, please leave a like down below as it really does help out with the algorithm. And subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this kind of content. And let me know if you want to see more of it. But let us get started and rank some of these restrictions. I'm pretty excited to see. And I've definitely had some uh, change of opinions over the last couple of days. So uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, we have the tier list right here. I'll be starting through generations first. Like I'll be going from Gen 1 restricted to Gen 2 restricted and so on. So... Let's get started and start with the first restricted. So the, so the first Pokemon we have in Gen 1, the only restricted Pokemon, don't know why, I guess Mew is a restricted, even though Mewtwo is artificial, it's a legendary Pokemon because there's only one of them in the world, I guess, is Mewtwo. And I'll be going over real quick. So we have Mewtwo first. And Mewtwo is an interesting Pokemon to say the least. Um, in VGC, it was actually pretty good in 2010, which was the first restricted format ever in VGC. It was a option where back in the day, we actually had the ability to switch items around in between games of sets. And uh, you could either run a choice specs Mewtwo with max speed really fast, or you could switch it to like one of the power items and actually like make it super slow for trick room usage. And yeah, that was definitely a potential option. And uh, Mewtwo actually did pretty decent, I think, in 2010 overall. Uh, in 2016 didn't do super well it had a few placements but not really too much and 2019 was kind of that same opinion really didn't do too much even with like top of ladies like a train if we look at mewtwo its stats are actually pretty solid for the most part it has a lot of speed and special attack where it is focused on and its defenses aren't terrible it is kind of frailer when we look at restricted pokemon however pretty high is HP stat as well as defense as well at least allow us to take one hit generally so it's a pretty balanced Pokemon overall 130 is kind of an awkward speed tier because of the fact that a lot of the faster restricted and uh, Regieleq of course do give it a bit of trouble outspeeding it especially with Electro Up Control Mewtwo is really good in the fact pure psychic however it gets a lot of good coverage moves if you do see right here gets a lot of good ones it gets fire coverage it gets electric coverage ice coverage psychic coverage fighting coverage um it gets a lot of good moves in general it gets trick room gets taunt it actually gets a decent amount of support moves it gets recover however not really that great in a recover set calm mind for setup i guess uh did it get nasty upon this generation i actually don't remember yeah it did actually get nasty upon this generation which is actually a pretty cool tech uh nasty pop of expanding force could potentially be disruptive of course, the one big problem with Mewtwo, I think, of course, again, its bulk isn't exactly super amazing. And the fact that we got Calyrex this generation, Ghost Rider, Calyrex does a lot of what Mewtwo does, a very fast offensive psychic type that's just really fast. It's faster than Mewtwo even, beats Mewtwo, has high special attack, maybe even a better ability. Mewtwo has pressure, which isn't bad, but not exactly helpful on a Pokemon that's probably only taking one or two hits. A nerve is actually pretty good though, but like literally Calyrex gets a nerve and another ability on top of that. So that's a little bit of a problem, I think, with Mewtwo. So yeah, I think Mewtwo is actually pretty good. I definitely do think it's one of the higher restricted. If I were to place Mewtwo on the tier list, I think I think it would probably be a B tier. I think uh, if we have S as like the top tier and C as a mid tier, I think it definitely is probably the upper tier because it is again very fast, has a really great coverage in general, really good moveset in general as well. And I think uh, Mewtwo definitely has potential. Of course, it does lose out to Calyrex. It does have a few things that does differ from Calyrex though, so I think it definitely can be used. And of course, like things with like Indity, which is a really good uh, Pokemon to help support Mewtwo. I think in general. Could be a potential threat. However, probably again, 130, even though 130 is still a crazy speed tier, it is not exactly the fastest restricted. Will probably struggle against like Zacian as well. 
including of course ghost rider calyrex shadow rider will still be a problem in the fact that shadow rider calyrex will probably be used more than me too will probably make it obviously a lot less useful however i still think it is better than a lot of the restrictors actually on this list so i would probably put in b tier which would be like an upper mid tier section next we got ho -Oh, and ho -Oh is an interesting pokemon so Oh, fire flying type and his best stat is actually special defense, which is actually crazy. Like its highest stat is a special defense, kind of mediocre in defense and speed. However, pretty good HP, uh, decent attack. 130 is actually pretty low. 110 for special attack. Not exactly the greatest, but you're usually running physical uh, hole anyway. But one of the key things about hole is that it gets regener regenerator now, and that's really useful. Basically, hole is meant to be bulky. It's usually meant especially with moves like recover and roost that it gets really allows it to sponge up attacks wall pokemon like uh xerneas and zacian if it doesn't have wall charge which is actually pretty solid so yeah i think ho is actually a pretty decent pokemon right here it does get access to a few moves i think sacred fire is one of the key moves that it gets it's ground coverage as well braver is a pretty hard hitting move especially with like max airstream as an option always a solid pokemon get some screens and stuff not really too useful substitutes not bad it did lose Toxic though. Toxic was actually a move that ho -Oh did actually run a little bit back in the early days, but overall, not really too, too much that it really gets. I think you're mainly using it for like the Sacred Fire, Braver, the coverage, the recovery with Recover. You probably run Protect as well. You could run Iron Heaven Steel Spike. You could run Weak Policy on this Pokemon. I think the best set for this Pokemon is easily just going to be like your standard Sacred Fire, Braver, Recover, and probably Protect and just like recover the health i think leftovers is a very solid item on ho -Oh. berries are also pretty decent on ho -Oh. you could run like a pasho berry for instance if you're really worried about like kyogre for instance or like uh maybe a the walking berry for um electric types like reggie aliki very solid pokemon overall though i think ho -Oh is a pretty good pokemon i think the only problem i have with ho -Oh in general is the fact that it does lose out to a lot of non-restricted it it really hates dealing with like intimidate as well because when intimidate really Again, not the highest attack staff for restricted Pokemon. So Pokemon like Incineroar and Landis will be able to slow it down very easily. I think, yeah. And it also struggles, of course, like a lot of rock type moves will probably be coming out, especially like a Groudon, for instance, Tyranitar, Landis Varian. You're going to have like strong hitting Mons on the physical side. Kyogre is also a little bit of a pain, even though it is a restricted. It does have a good matchup pair against like most of the restricted if you look at it. Like it does actually pretty solid against most of the restricted uh barring like ground on with rock move kyogre and um of course random electric moves in general however i think because of the fact that it just struggles against four times week to rock and it's actually pretty easy to rock run a rock move in this generation i feel like especially like on pokemon like landers to help like i don't know cover the xerneas weakness i think ho does struggle against a lot of those although it does do pretty well against like for instance it does do pretty well against Venusaur, which is probably one of the biggest ones. Amoongus and Cortana, which is really nice. But in general, like it will struggle against the rest. So uh, I'd probably put ho -Oh. I think I would probably put ho -Oh in B tier. It's definitely not like the biggest threat. There's a lot of probably answers to ho -Oh that you can deal with. Again, Intimidate kind of like shuts it down quite a bit offensively. And of course, four times week to rock is always not amazing. It does get airstream. It does have pretty good utility, especially since it has a pretty decent restricted matchup. But yeah, I think I'd probably put Ho and B. It doesn't exactly have the most offensive capabilities unless you're running like a life or weakness policy set, but that requires setup. Intimidate's still going to hurt it. Uh, Incineroar and land is very common switch ins, I think, that just like really make Ho's job a lot harder, especially since restricted. So you usually want like the most power that you can get out of them because they have these incredible high attacking stats i think uh with ho -Oh being one of the weaker ones i think with intimidate just like really lowers that damage output and uh kind of like forces it to either switch out or like being this uh recover stallmate trying to take damage and like recover it i guess but yeah i think ho -Oh would probably be b tier i think it's nowhere near as good as like the other restrictions that can just apply a more offensive pressure and definitely plays more slower i think also, I forgot to mention that Ho also lost Tailwind in this generation because Tailwind was a move tutor move. So yeah, I think um has a bit less utility now. So yeah, I think B tier would be correct for Ho as well. Next we have Lugia here, and Lugia is 
pretty interesting of a legendary. You would think this would be like water type potentially, but it is actually psychic and flying. So Lugia was never really that great. I think it maybe had like one 2010 run, but I'm not really like too sure about Lugia. And I think it was like a really bulky set at the time. Of course, we have a lot of answers to it now, especially dark and ghost being really good offensive typings in general. We have a lot of dark types in this format. So Psychic exactly isn't the best typing for a defensive Pokemon, especially like there's Urshifu, Reggie, Eliki, Incineroar, for instance, a lot of Pokemon. I think uh, when we look at Lugia's stats, of course, its highest stats are its defenses as well as its HP. And then you look at its offensive stats and it's pretty underwhelming 90 attack and 90 special attack for restricted is really bad actually it's one of the lower ones it does have pretty good speed it's kind of weird it's a speedy tank which is really interesting although it's not really like super speedy of course it does get access to max airstream and yeah it's stats they're really bulky i mean with lugia's hidden ability multi-scale which we get in this generation it's pretty bulky but I feel like chip damage you can easily get, especially with like Reggie Eliki spamming Electroweb. There's obviously Fake Out, so maybe not exactly the best ability needed right now. It could be helpful like weakness policy sets, of course, which would be really nice in general, since Lugia probably will be a target for like a lot of Electroweb sets. And I think that would probably be like one of the more gimmick and probably better sets, actually. It gets a decent amount of coverage. Aeroblast, of course, great move. High crit ratio, 95% accuracy, but... You know, sometimes you gotta sacrifice it for like, I mean, it's the same as Air Slash, so you might as well just go Air Blast with higher base power anyway. It has pretty good coverage, actually. Psychic, Flying, Ground with Earth Power, uh, Water Moves like Hydro Pump, for instance. It gets uh, Ghost, Electric. It actually gets a lot of coverage. I think it gets, uh, it does get Ice coverage as well. Like, it has pretty decent coverage, although it's offensive capabilities, as I mentioned before. Base 90. The thing about Lugia is at plus two even. It's still pretty underwhelming damage. I remember it's more common set back in 2019 was like Moon Series. And it ran the YMZ with Z Tailwind. And what that allowed it to do basically was like always get the crit of Aeroblast. But the thing about crit Aeroblast is it still did pretty underwhelming damage actually. While you get like Airstream at plus two, it's definitely like probably a weaker one. It's not exactly super strong. Like it'll still hurt quite a bit. You know, it's a boosted attack. It's still going to be like underwhelming and still miss out a lot of knockouts, I feel like. So, yeah. And I believe it also lost tail in this generation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it also lost tail in this generation. So, it can't really be used as a support Pokemon as much. Although, I think Lugia does get Trick Room, actually. Uh, Trick Room Lugia, not really. Oh, it doesn't actually get Trick Room, which is kind of weird, actually, for a Psychic type. I don't know why. I like thought it did, but I guess it didn't. Overall, it gets okay support moves again uh, as restricted i feel like you usually want to be more offensive capabilities maybe you can squeeze a support move for instance uh but i feel like they're not exactly that great it does get calm mind and of course it gets recovery which i think makes it like pretty decent at least because it's able to wall a lot of pokemon however at the same time a lot of common pokemon you know just can set up on lugia for instance or not really worry about too much even at plus two, its offensive capabilities aren't exactly the greatest compared to like other restricted that just can do a ton of damage like right off the bat or like instant KOs after like one setup. Luga is a weird one because I feel like even with with a setup of like weakness policy, it's still actually going to be like not exactly too amazing. So yeah. I think I would probably put Lugia in mid-tier, like C-tier. Yeah, I think Lugia would be a mid-tier Pokemon. It's just, I think, um, it's probably like barely on the border right here. I think if it's mid-tier, it's definitely one of the lower mid-tiers because of the fact, again, offensive capability isn't that great. It's typing, not exactly the greatest offensively either. And uh, it could be like really good offensively, but again, it doesn't really do too, too much. I think uh, even Galarian Articuno could be like... Uh, the more offensive Lugia, because it's got like the same typing, it even gets access to Tailwind and Trick Room, which are better supports. Like the only thing you can really do with Lugia, I feel like, is like defensive stall, which I don't think is that great, especially when you have like a lot of power, for instance, in this format. And then you got like, um, and then the powerhouse set that this thing can run is very underwhelming. So I think I would definitely put it in mid tier. Next, we have the Gen 3. We can start with Groudon, and oh boy, Groudon. Don, <laughs> this is where my opinions. Oh man, I feel like I always get told off on my Groudon opinion for like regular, but I think Groudon is really not great 
in uh when it's not primal ground and primal ground is an absolute monster like one of the best pokemon ever created like a top three easily top three pokemon regular ground on though i feel like it's super underwhelming it has pretty decent stats with like you know it's attack stats pretty good it's offense is pretty good it's special attack unfortunately not that great even though it does have access to a pretty decent uh, special coverage move set hp pretty solid 90 special defense is actually pretty it's like okay especially with max quake you can boost up of course it's speed kind of average so yeah the thing about groudon is oh man i feel like groudon is just a hard pokemon it there's so much power i think especially in special attacks now like i think groudon was a really good pokemon for instance 2010 it was like pretty hard to deal with groudon i feel like in general but I feel like as the generations have gone by, we've gotten way more powerful Pokemon that are able to like just do really hard hitting damage and like Groudon does suffer again, not the greatest special defense in the world and can easily struggle against it. So I always felt Groudon was super underwhelming. Uh, Kyogre, as a Kyogre player, I guess this also might be my opinion as a Kyogre player since I mainly like Kyogre, was just in switching to Water Spout. Like seeing the Groudon switch into like take 90% was just like, or even Oko was <laughs> very, very sad as the Groudon player. And uh, yeah. So I think one of the benefits of Groudon, the move Precipice Blaze is actually an insane ground type move. Like, oh, Precipice Blaze is actually one of the greatest ground type moves. Actually, 120 base power, 85 accurate. Very solid. You're pretty much always going to run Precipice Blaze over Earthquake. Like, the offensive capabilities that Precipice Blades has over Earthquake is just like really good you're always going to run press with blades ground i mean the problem with regular ground it has a decent move set special wise as i said before but it's a pure ground type it's not a fire type so it doesn't get the stab factor like primal ground does when it's a fire type and again special attack isn't that great so the special set it does get eruption not that good it really isn't even if you like i guess you could put specs on it but it's still not really like that amazing it gets a decent move pool with like sword stance as an option choice band is always like a different set you could run with like precipice blades fire punch and then like rock slide and then uh whatever last move you really want to clip uh i think it gets aerial lace actually i know this is a ubers that i guess that's an ubers it's not in this generation but i know they ran aerial lace on groudon but i guess not in this generation but yeah, could, Max Airstream Ground would actually be super funny and actually could make it threat. You, of course, I think it's just better to pair it up with like uh, another Pokemon that just has Max Airstream boosting the ground on just spamming Precipice Blades if you go for it. Uh, Sword Sand Substitute aren't bad sets. It does get okay support move sets. Not really that amazing. I think you just like use it for like damage output. There are like a few sets that I would probably recommend running on this, which would be Life Orb and choice band i like those sets probably the most i actually really like offensive groudon because i used it a little bit in sun series wasn't exactly my favorite pokemon to use but whenever i got the strong hit off i think it was pretty incredible for instance a choice band or life orb set could just like oko and Cinnor even after intimidate which was like really solid i think but otherwise yeah it always just disappointed me otherwise the other set that was very common is usually like a very specially defensive bulky groudon with sword stance and then like one of the citrus or wiki berries but yeah i mean i think it wasn't a bad set of course it does require setup and of course like you're not doing any damage really even with precipice blades i feel like if you get intimidated especially but even at neutral it felt like it was really underwhelming and had to set up that source sense basically so oh man if it was me i'd probably put ground on in like a d or f tier i think that's where it probably be if it was up to me but i think uh basic utility it just like it'd probably be like passable i think it would definitely be c tier i think it is technically above lugia probably um because i think the choice band life orb sets are still pretty solid and of course like um the bulky berry set was probably the more common towards the end of 2019 when it came to like the sun and moon series so yeah i'd probably put ground on c i don't know how good it'll be i think ground types are really good of course against like reggie elegy and stuff setting up sun for venusaur i think uh what makes ground on probably better is drought to help out the partners i think venusaur is like again really good pokemon in this format and i guess helping set up sun is not bad for it either it's also a pokemon that can technically take on zacian it's still going to take a lot with behemoth blade even with like its high defense and hp 
uh, if you intimidate Zayshan, it does help out. But uh, of course, there is also like Precipice Blades being a good move and a bad move for a reason. Uh, because it's really good when it hits, it's really bad when it misses. So it doesn't have a 100% accurate ground type move that is an Earthquake, and Earthquake's very underwhelming on Groudon. Generally, the damage output isn't that amazing. And if you're just going to use Earthquake Groudon, you might as well just use Lander's Teeth. So put the Groudon in C tier, I think, is a appropriate spot. Me, I'd probably put it in D or F. Uh, but I think utility-wise, it has enough to put it in the C tier. Next, we got Kyogre. And oh boy, Kyogre. Man, this was basically the only Pokemon I really was using in 2019 for the most part. I think I used Kyogre for like 90% of the year. I think I brought Kyogre to almost every tournament, actually, that I played back in Generation 7 uh, restricted formats. It's just a really good Pokemon. What can I say? If we look at Kyogre, <laughs> let's just look at Kyogre. I think the insane part about Kyogre, unlike Groudon, where Groudon doesn't get advantage of its weather other than like as a resistance and even then it's taking a lot of damage from Water Spout from in the sun from uh, Kyogre. I think the thing about Kyogre, Drizzle, absolutely fantastic ability. It is absolutely insane. Swift Swim compared with this, you could pair it up with like Kingdra Louis Colo, which is really nice. And um, it's really solid because of the fact that Kyogre's already high special attack side. If we look at a base 150 with the pure water type, which is only weak to two types in the game, electric and grass, combined with the fact that you are basically getting this boost with the 150 base power plus the stab plus the rain, it actually makes it insane. And if we give it water spout, which it does get, it destroys teams. It actually like does so much damage. It's really hard to switch into Kyogre. For instance, water spout can actually just like straight up Oko like a lot of the list, especially if they don't have Dynamax or proper bulk. And that's actually just insane. So yeah, if we look at his stats, 150 special attack, fantastic. 140 special defense, great. Because like a lot of the grass and the electric coverage you're gonna see is usually tends to be on the special side. Like Reggie Aliki, for instance, uh, like uh, Kyogre can ease, can live a Thunderbolt and just like fire off an Origin Pulse, for instance. And uh, you know, this thing can even live like Xerneas Moonblasted with like proper investment. It doesn't even require like so much investment to like uh, live that actually it doesn't really take that much and uh yeah it's like pretty insane the thing is 90 speed tier it can work in trick room and tailwind which is the benefit of course um it's actually a pretty good speed tier when it comes to like uh tailwind specifically because it can also be like retro alicky with like modest uh max speed you don't have to go modest max speed but just as an example and in trick room it will definitely decimate unprepared teams especially if they don't have like a really good slow mon and yeah Physical defense, not exactly amazing. 90, again, is pretty low, like Groudon. But the thing is, we have Intimidate that can help cover it. And Intimidate is way more common of a tool here that can help out Kyogre. So, yeah, that really just helps cover that weakness. And I think it pairs a lot well with, like, other Pokemon. It's move pool, very solid. I think, as I mentioned before, if you run Kyogre, you're probably going to want to run Water Spout. I think uh, the thing about Kyogre that makes it way superior than Groudon is having its really powerful move... 100% accurate you don't even have to run origin pulse water spout is a key to success it does so much damage in the rain so many pokemon struggle to survive this attack even with dynamax you're taking like probably a lot like maybe even 70 percent potentially um in neutral I, and i think that's actually insane and it hits like again it's a spread move so it does both targets which is crazy Kyogre always was like one of my favorite Pokemon because it's just like was and just out damage opponents. It's really hard to switch into sometimes because water is an insane typing in general, boosted by the rain and all that. It does get options again. Thunder is a really good set and Ice Beam. You're probably going to run want to run Water Spout always. Like that's probably one of the best things about Kyogre. Then you're going to probably want to run a second water type move in case uh, Kyogre does get weakened. Either Scald or Origin Pulse, you get options. I, Origin Pulse is really good, especially if you're able to land the attack. Scald isn't bad either, especially if you don't want to miss. And definitely, I did run Scald for every Sun and um, for every Sun series and Moon series event. And I ran Origin Pulse on Primal Kyogre. I think Scald is perfectly fine, personally. And um, yeah, it actually gets a good physical move pool. And physical Primal Kyogre was a thing in Ubers. Not really that great in VGC. And uh, yeah. 
I think uh, you're probably going to run item wise. Choice Scarf is a really good option. It's really fast. It's really hard for teams to prepare. You could run easily Choice Specs. It does a lot. Mystic Water is definitely one of my personal favorite sets as it just messes up Calx because it's really, again, really hard to already survive the Water Spout and Rain. And sometimes, again, as I mentioned about EVs before, they're really important, especially in restricted formats. You sometimes can barely survive it. And the Mystic Water just messes up the calc and you can just like pick up KOs or two KOs that you couldn't get if you didn't have that. So I think Kyogre really good just offensively. It does get Calm Mind for setup, but I don't think it needs it. Uh, again, the physical move set isn't bad, but overall just stick to special moves and just going for offensive damage. And basically you have a very solid Pokemon. This Pokemon is really hard to switch into. I think it's definitely probably one of the top restrictors, especially when Primal Groudon does exist. And uh, yeah, I'd probably put it in an S tier easily. It's one of the strongest restricted actually. And yeah, this does insane damage. Really hard to switch into. Teams need answers for it. I think like the thing about Kyogre is I could actually see it like in A tier because I think there are definitely more answers in Generation 8 compared to Generation 7. For instance, Reggie Aliki, which outspeeds Kyogre now. Even Scarf Kyogre's and can like Electra Web or like Fundable for big damage. Even if Kyogre survives, it's still taking a lot, which means Water Spout won't be as useful. And then of course, Real Boom with Priority Grassy Glide, I think is a really big pain to deal with. And of course, Dynamax Pokemon do allow more Pokemon to survive the Water Spout that initially wouldn't. So there's that option, but usually Kyogre is able to do so much damage and it definitely needs prep work if you face it because otherwise it will swamp your team. Next Pokemon, we got Rayquaza here, and Rayquaza... Oh boy, Rayquaza is always one of the weird Pokemon. We got that Mega Evolution, which made it pretty solid. In fact, broken in singles, but overall in competitive doubles, like Mega Rayquaza was all right in 2016. It did win after all. And then um, in 2019, Sun and Moon series. So the thing about Sun and Moon series is Rayquaza didn't get a signature move Dragon Scent because Mega Evolutions were banned in those series and Dragon Scent, uh, you had to have Dragon Scent in order to Mega Evolve and that was how you Mega Evolved and since there's no Mega Evolution in this game we can have Dragon Scent in this format in previous formats, Sun and Moon series you were not allowed to have Dragon Scent so it was a very poor mod I mean Aerial Ace was pathetic really on Rayquaza at least Dragon Scent at least saves it it's actually pretty kind of cool as a mon because it doesn't have the best defenses in the world for restricted, but it's still pretty okay-ish. It'll definitely, again, survive one hit or two. And then you have 150 attack and special attack, I think is actually insane. However, his speed here, 95, isn't exactly the greatest. So there is that. But of course, as a flying type does get access to max airstream, which is a pretty big benefit, I think, to Rayquaza. And uh, yeah, it just gets a lot of good moves as we can see here like airlock of course to deal with wetter which could be good i guess but it's also weird because against kyogre for instance uh yeah you can weaken the damage of water spout and you can maybe stop swift swims apparently but you also get threatened by ice beam but they have it and ice beam can usually just be like a one shot to uh requaz up oh that's maybe you're running like an assault vest or something it gets a pretty good move set though as a dragon type it gets a lot of good coverage flying fire ground with earth power or earthquake extreme speed and it does get extreme speed it gets a pretty good move pool with like sword stance it's not a bad pokemon per se i think the problem is it's again slow as a flying type four times weak to ice weak to like a lot of general coverage like fairy for instance and fairy is definitely going to be a top pokemon typing in the format i think overall so yeah i think Rayquaza does struggle because it does take a lot of super effective hits but it's a pretty flexible Pokemon. Dragon Sun is definitely, I think, the one of the best moves for it. And I would highly recommend you use it. Unless you're running the special set. Their Slash is okay. Not exactly that amazing, but Dragon Sun really does hurt. I think Sword Sense is definitely the better set. Items, you could probably run a lot, actually. Like Focus Ash, Assault Vest. We saw Choice Bane sometimes. It's a very flexible mon, actually. Because uh, you could run, like, even Berries, for instance. Rayquaza was a very flexible Pokemon back in, like, Ultra Series of 19. Of course, that was with Mega Rayquaza, though. Regular Rayquaza is definitely a different monster, and Delta Stream really did help out Mega Ray, for instance. So, not exactly sure where Rayquaza would really do well in competitive. I don't know, because I think the top mons, like, Rayquaza does struggle against them a lot. 
not in the terms of damage output, but the fact that it probably gets out sped and probably just like always threatened, especially by super effective attacks. So I think if I were to put Rayquaza, I probably put in C tier. I think just like the low speed, unless you just like airstream immediately. But again, you get pressured by a lot, especially like the upper restrictors, I think uh, later on the list. It, it will definitely struggle against those. It's not like the most amazing against opposing restricted. Uh, Airlock isn't nearly as good as Delta Stream in very situational. It only affects, again, uh, Groudon, Kyogre, maybe uh, the Torkoals that will show up in, like, I, maybe Tyranitar, I guess. But, like, yeah, I don't think it's going to be, like, too useful. Unless maybe you're facing, like, a hard weather team. But, yeah, I think Rayquaza would definitely be C tier. Uh, yeah, I think Rayquaza would be C tier. I don't know if I would put it above or below Groudon is my question. I'm not really too worried about ranking, um, like in order, but I think it's definitely better than Lugia because it's better offensively. I'm just not sure if it's better than Groudon or not. I think I'll probably put Groudon still higher though. Next to Gen 4 Legendaries, we got Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. So let us look at them. So we got Dialga up first. And Dialga, actually, I changed my opinion over in the last couple of days. So I thought Dialga was probably initially, you know, Dialga is pretty okay. It's like a really bulky Pokemon. Steel Dragon is actually pretty fantastic typing. And uh, as you can see from stats, it's very solid in like almost everything it has other than speed. But it's like all right because Dialga does get access to Trick Room as an option and it can drive in tailwind as well so it's not a bad pokemon in like that kind of tier it's actually very solid for what it has pretty high special attack 150 is pretty good and then like its defenses are pretty good they're pretty good 100 special defense 120 physical defense and 100 hp is definitely solid could be used as a physical attacker don't use it as a physical attacker unless you're memeing um it's definitely better as a special attacker gets better special moves and yeah again as it does get trick room and now access to telepathy which is cool in certain cases for instance if you have a landers on your team and uh, you want to avoid using protect or against earthquake and you want to gain more momentum telepathy is definitely that option you have which is really nice as it's just like another thing that Diaga gets so if we look at Dialga, Dragon coverage, again, they always get like insane type coverage. Dragon, Fire, Steel, Ground, Ice. Oh, man. And Trick Room does really well. Dialga, I think, is a fantastic Pokemon. I think Dialga, I think, in the past, kind of like, it was a pretty good in 2010. It was in 2016. Okay-ish. It wasn't like absolutely amazing, in my opinion, in 2016. In 2019, it did some stuff. It did do some stuff, not in the Ultra Series. In Sun Series, it did pretty well. It did actually win the um, International Championship in the Seniors Division for Latin America. But, I don't know, Diablo was always one of the weird Pokemon. Uh, the main reason is, even though it has a really high HP and decent special defense, I think the problem was Diablo needed a lot of investment to live like Kyogre Water Spout, for instance, which I felt was like pretty insane for a Pokemon that resisted. And, of course, like... Uh, steel type not resisting fairy is like always a little bit awkward it was just like um slower than xerneas swell not being able to uh go for like a flash can before geomancies was always like really tough i think for it and then after xerneas because geomancy flash can wasn't doing too too much so it was always one of the awkward pokemon but overall i think in this format definitely better with the dynamax option for steel spike absolutely insane will help out with its bulk as well good coverage I think it's typing is pretty solid again not resisting fairies a little bit insane but overall pretty good pokemon item wise you could probably run a variety of items from bulky berries uh, shuckerberry of course there is a lot more unnerve in the format so watch out for the unnerve pokemon uh you could run a soul vest you could run weakness posse i've definitely seen a lot of weakness posse dialga i've seen like some adamant orbs which isn't bad life orb like they're all not bad i think dialga is a very flexible pokemon and where you could run like a bulky set to a offensive set it definitely has that option it does have trick room as well and yeah i think dialga is a very solid pokemon i originally had dialga in the b tier actually but i think my opinions changed over the last couple of days and i think it's actually an a tier pokemon and um yeah i don't think it's an s tier pokemon because it doesn't like completely just like sweep or dominate teams i feel like which is a big factor um weakness policy of course it doesn't exactly have like super big spread moves or anything and uh you can usually damage diago with like a lot of neutral attacks for instance like fairy for instance it will chip away diago over time 
So yeah, but 150 special attack is pretty insane, I think. And it does do pretty well against like a lot of the restrictors as well, in my opinion. Especially some of the uh, upper and of course some, a lot of the lower, actually. It does actually have a decent restricted matchup. So I think Diaga is fairly in A. I think it does in sweet teams, but it does do well, pretty well against them. So next we got Palkia in Palkia. Uh, okay. Palkia is interesting. I think Palkia is definitely interesting. In my opinion, it has pretty good stats as you can see. It's basically Diaga, but the defense and special defense is swapped and HP and speed are swapped for some reason. But overall, Palkia... Like, Water Dragon is a really cool typing. It's the same type as Kingdra. It does have, like, pretty good offensive capabilities, especially with, like, its move pool that we'll see in a bit. I think, uh, Palkia... The problem was with Palkia was, even though it outsped Xerneas, of course, like, it always threatened by Xerneas, which wasn't exactly that great. It didn't deal with, like, a lot of the other restrictions as well. I think Palkia overall is actually not a bad Pokemon, though. Like, I think Palkia has a lot of offensive capabilities it's definitely probably really good offensively with like life orb i think um lustrous orb isn't a bad item technically on it you could run weakness policy uh, uh, i guess with comfy that's a, definitely a potential option i think um overall it's stats the problem is of course you don't get like a you could run polytoad i guess you can't run kyo and palky since it's one restricted which i think is one of the downsides to it uh one of the more common sets on palky was trickering back in 2010 and in like 2016, I don't remember how much Palkia was used. I think Palkia was still a Trick Room Mon in 2016 as well. Yeah, it was. And then 2019, Palkia... I think Palkia was actually offensive. Yeah, it had Waltarium Z in Moon Series and was actually pretty offensive. I definitely used Life Orb Palkia back in the day because Life Orb Hydro Pump and Rain, for instance, could knock out Xerneas if you land. And that was actually pretty nice in general. And also like resisting Kyra's attacks. This is a Pokemon that can actually like take on Kyogre, Kyogre, which was nice because of like being able to res four times resistance to water is actually incredible against Kyogre could hit uh Groudon and do really well against it generally and uh yeah it did have like pretty decent moves I think um I think overall with Palkia while it doesn't exactly boost up like um Diaga does as a Dynamax Pokemon because Diaga would like Steel Spike and Max Quake to boost up his defenses like most Steel types do I think Palkia, more offensive, definitely has a lot of potential here. Especially with like Hydro Pump, Spatial Rend is a pretty solid move. Does get access to Thunder, does get access to Fire Coverage with Flamethrower and Fire Blast. I think overall Palkia is pretty offensive. It does have that Trick Room option as well. It also got Telepathy in this generation if you want to pair it up with Landris. It's definitely a potential option. So yeah, I think overall, I think Palkia is a very solid Pokemon. It can do a lot of damage. I think the pro problem is... Unless you're running Politoed, which means you would probably be running Politoed, you have to basically um, Dynamax it or set up Rain Dance in order to set up the really strong Max Geysers, which I think uh, Palkia does like. It does like using Hydro Pump as well. And uh, yeah, I think Palkia, I think if I were to put it on the list, it'd probably be B tier. I think it'd be probably lower. I think the thing is, is typing is not super. Like, his timing is pretty good for what it is. I don't think it's like a Pokemon that easily sweeps teams. And it's definitely, I think, a bit more niche because it's definitely a little bit match dependent. Palkia, I think, does really well against a lot of non restrictors too. Of course, there is that Fairy Weakness, which is actually pretty huge. And the fact is, it's... I think the problem is just, like, immediate damage output isn't exactly consistent, especially without rain immediately. And of course, like its speed, like 100 is not bad. It's not exactly the fastest though and can get outsped by a bunch, take a lot of damage by like Calyrex and kind of struggles against a lot of Pokemon we're going to see in the upper tier. So yeah, I probably think B tier is probably very solid. It's more of a niche Pokemon. However, it is pretty powerful if you can set up conditions for it to sweep, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, Garatina. All right. Both Garatina Altered and Garatina Origin. So Giratina, as we can see, its stats are really weird. Basically, they took the offensive capabilities of Palky and Diaga and put into HP and traded the HP with its attacking stats. It's got really good bulk. Again, pretty average speed. Um, unfortunately, its offensive capabilities aren't exactly that great here. And yeah, 
if we look at Mupu, it's not exactly like it's all right like ghost type is really good offensively the problem is it's not really like an offensive pokemon it doesn't really get too too much i feel like uh where you like really would want it because if you look at its offensive move pool not exactly super amazing let's go like maybe some physical sets you don't have to run shadow force in this format you can run poltergeist now which is actually pretty cool uh shadow force was also a pretty cool move back in the day for like situational sets but giratina not, never really was used uh, much in competitive and yeah, it's really hard it does get some set with calm mind the only problem with uh, giratina is it does not get access to recovery which I think with a bulky Pokemon like this, having recovery would actually be pretty nice. It's Moopool. It's decent support wise, like Wisp, for instance, but overall, just generally, I think really disappointing um, for the most part about its role. It's a really confusing role with Garatina. I think um, I'm going to pair this up also with the offensive version of Garatina, which is Garatina Origin. If you don't know, you have to have the orb attached to it as well. And it's basically the same Garatina. It gets the exact same move pool. The thing about this is it does get, you know, boosted attack and special attack by a little bit for in trade of his offenses, which is an interesting trade. But I think the problem with this Garatina is you do have to run the orb item, which, you know, for 20 increase and I guess levitate, it's not exactly like the best trade off. It does get like, you know, increase of its dragon ghost type coverage by a little bit so i guess it's technically more useful than life orb if you're not worried about like earth power or earthquake damage depending on that kind of set i guess um but overall it's just like really disappointing i think i think giratina i just need i think recovery i think if it got recovery it'd be a lot better but overall it's stats i think um the trade-off isn't like super amazing in my opinion and um yeah I don't think like it's like the orb really helps it too too much i think even regular giratina with like visas policy setup could just like do a bit better but overall like like it has really good offensive typing yet it's playing more of a defensive role it's kind of slow i think it doesn't really get access to ways that can airstream other than um i think it gets fly i guess and dual wing beasts i guess if you're running that physical set which might be better of course uh Again, a lot of dark types in this format, which will hurt Garatina, and it doesn't exactly have the best ways to counter those dark types. I think overall, I think it's just underwhelming. I think I would put Garatina, both Origin and Altered Form, I think, in the D tier. I think that's where it belongs. It's just, it just needs a little bit. I think it just needs like a little bit of a push, but unfortunately, I just feel like it's an offensive. It's like a really offensive typing pokemon on a defensive pokemon and the offensive capabilities aren't really there the setup isn't really there it doesn't have anything that can really set up with i feel like in general and it's definitely going to lose to a lot of restrictions on the list palkia speeds diaga can just destroy kyogre will still do a ton of damage to the resistive water spell can cover with ice beam again a lot of dark types in the format like urshifu um galarian moltres and Cinderor will make this a uh, harder time Zacian as well. It's really hard to run Garrison, especially like when Xerneas was big back in the day. And Xerneas could still destroy both of these Pokemon, especially. So, yeah, I just don't really see uh, Garrison doing too much work here, unfortunately. Next, we got Reshiram and Zekrom, the Unova heroes. All right, so let's start off with Zekrom. I think Zekrom was always a Pokemon I wanted to be good, but it just like fell short off the mark. So, we have. Zekrom here I think with Zekrom it's interesting because like if you look at the stats like a lot of the legendaries actually have like very similar stats overall like <laughs> I think that's kind of funny but overall Zekrom I think the only thing I had complaints about it's like got pretty good stats right here the only problem is speed so I think the problem with Zekrom that I had was it was a Pokemon I think that could have done really well against a lot of Kyogre teams if it just had a little bit more speed like 10 5 would have been really nice but 10 would have been great because i was being xerneas and hitting it would have been great as well because this thing actually hits pretty hard with base 150 attack i think uh, zekrom is an interesting pokemon it's just like it could have done a lot of work i think electric coverage i think terrible is really what's cool i think terrible if you don't know it's basically a mold breaker so 
you can ignore lightning rod which is like paired with kyogre for instance so and like other legendaries like ho for instance and you would just be able to like go for really strong electric moves and just like oko the kyogre in the ho without really worrying about the partners which i thought was really cool the problem was that even if you ran zekrom was the fact is it's bedtime with like max speed ogre and some of them did run timid so i always found that very underwhelming about zekrom it just wasn't really super amazing i felt like and yeah it just really i think disappointed in general right here so if you look at his move pool it's not exactly super amazing but it's pretty much what you need i think uh having access to max airstream is nice with dual wing beats you don't have to run fly and i definitely wouldn't um it gets um bolt strike and i think bolt strike is an amazing electric type move 130 base power for 85 percent accuracy with 20 percent chance to lower the uh, target or 20% to paralyze the target. It's pretty good if you hit it, but like it's pretty good because of the fact that even through Intimidate, you could still knock out like ho -Oh and Ky Bulky Kyogre, which I felt was like really nice, especially with like a magnet item. And uh, it does get okay moves. It gets Roost as recovery. Actually, I, it doesn't get Roost in this generation, so it did lose that. <laughs> but yeah, it gets some other moves. It gets uh, ground coverage. It's just a really strange Mon, I think because it has like a lot of potential uh it's stealing i don't think it gets iron head right no it doesn't get iron head i mean it's just a really confusing pokemon i feel like especially since i feel uh of course they make a lot of dragons and then next type i guess they weren't expecting fairy to come out and then fairy just like invalidated so many dragon types in general uh specifically xerneas which always just gave it trouble in 2016, Zekrom wasn't really used, neither was Reshiram. And uh, in 19, Zekrom was used a little bit. It was like supposed to be the anti Kyogre Tornadus answer that most players had. But overall, I felt like it didn't even do that great of a job. It would still take a lot from Water Spout. And then you would have to play Speed Tight games uh, that really depended on your set, I think, on Zekrom. But overall, I think Zekrom is not bad. It's not bad it's just it does pretty well like for instance uh zekrom can do well against zayshon so i don't have player off and some of them don't run player off which is actually pretty nice and you can hit with like bolt strike um airstream again is really good dragon coverage i guess but overall like i don't think it's like a super amazing pokemon this format uh there's still gonna be like fairy types like xerneas for instance it really struggles i think against like some of the restrictions like it does well against some of the top restrictors but it also does uh Kind of weird against like most of the other restricteds, which is also confusing. Uh, there's obviously like an increase in landers, which is going to make it a little bit tough to use that ground. There's like uh, quite a few Pokemon that could probably like uh, intimidate it because again, intimidate on a physical restricted is pretty huge, reduces the damage output. That ground does do a bit more damage though, like it does do pretty well even in minus one. But yeah, I think it's like kind of a situational Pokemon. It does do pretty well again. Bulky water types, you can knock out like Feeny. Kyogre, you can knock out a uh, Yveltal, you can knock out. You can do a lot of chip. However, I always felt like Zekrom again speed was super underwhelming. Its bulk isn't like unbeatable because it's like it's not bad for restricted. It's actually pretty good for restricted. However, it's still like not like so amazing. Like 100, 120, 100 is pretty decent, but it's not like uh it will survive everything, of course. And yeah, I think uh Zekrom offensively has potential but i think overall i think it'd be better than a lot of pokemon d tier because i think again uh dealing with like kyogre and some other restrictors which i think like uh again well some of the more top restricteds i think is like pretty decent so i think i'd probably put in like i want to say like bottom of uh mid tier i'd probably put it like above lugia potentially probably above lugia i'm not sure because it could be below lugia but i think it is going to be above lugia i think zekrom definitely with like its offensive typing it just does well and again it does actually do well against like quite a few of the restrictors so i think i would put zekrom in c and then reshiram is our other pokemon here and i think reshiram is 
I think a Pokemon that actually got better. So Rushdown was never really used in competitive, like not at all. I think the only time you really saw it was like maybe Sun or Moon series in 2019. It wasn't used in 2016, didn't exist in 2010. And uh, yeah, it's the same of Zekrom basically, but literally the attack and special attack are reversed. And um, yeah, 90 speed is still really bad. I, I don't know why they made it 90. Why were they making auto restrictors basically 90 other than Palkia? Just make it base 100 and it would have probably worked out fine and actually would have been a lot better back in Sun and Moon series actually because if Reshiram outsped Xerneas and could like get a max flare off in the Sun for instance that could like Oko Xerneas before an attack would have actually been very threatening but alas not really the case here. Basically this is going to be the fire version of Zekrom Turbo Blaze is Mold Breaker essentially and uh, instead of electric coverage you basically get fire coverage and you get basically the same Pokemon. Uh, the only thing about the Rush Ram is that it's, on a, it's a special Pokemon which is actually huge because it does not get, I believe it doesn't get any special flying moves if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if you want to run a, if you want to run Airstream on this Pokemon, you're going to have to run Dual Wing Beats, which isn't great. So I wouldn't really recommend that. And I think it also lost Tailwind. I think that's also another thing about Zekrom. It did lose Tailwind this generation. It, uh, these Pokemon did get Tailwind, uh, in Generation 7, but Tailwind's no longer move to the move. So yeah, that's actually very concerning, I think. So less utility and yeah, overall, it's not really like super amazing. I think the thing that made Reshiram better was lately like there's a lot more Pokemon I feel like it does better against now. Cause like it hits quite hard with uh, the blue flare. It does a lot of damage, especially if you can get the sun up. Uh, Earth power hits pretty well against like Incineroar that could switch into it or other fire types. And of course like a Draco Meteor will still do a ton of damage at the end of the day. It doesn't, it doesn't get roost anymore because it did lose it, it did lose tailwind as well but overall mm, i don't know i feel like it's not like offensively it's probably not bad it's a pokemon that can like maybe take on like for instance zacian upcoming but yeah i think it might have gotten better but it's still not like super amazing right at the end of the day I'm trying to think about what his matchups could potentially be and yeah it does like okay against Venusaur although there is that you know max quake potential fear it doesn't really beat Kyogre but at least it's not like weak to it I think overall not bad it probably got better in this generation just because of like Pokemon you could hit especially like a lot of um in the Battle of Legends tournament there's a lot of Pokemon that Rushram hit super effectively which was Magearna and Necrozma and Sogaleo but I don't know. I think it might be better in this generation. Like, um, Zekrom might have got worse. I think Reshiram might have been better. Uh, I think I'd probably put in C tier. If anything, I do still think it's a mid Pokemon. It's lost some of the roles that it had. It's better against a few Pokemon, but still struggles a lot in general. So I'd probably put it in B. It's probably actually below or quad. I can't tell if it's below or above or quasi. I think I'd put it as below for now. It could potentially be up. Maybe it could be like in the B tier potentially. But overall, I think uh, with the tools that it lost, it's not exactly like. I don't think it's like a super big game changer. At least it hits a lot of Pokemon I could switch into. Uh, Rush Ram, for instance, like the fight, the things that take Blue Flare don't really like taking Earth Power, which I think is nice. It get, does get access to Max Overgrow as well with Solar Beam, so I guess that's like another, you know, positive. But overall, yeah, not exactly the greatest mods. I think if these Pokemon just had base ten more speed, would have actually been pretty decent overall. I think it would actually been pretty good. And that is going to be part one of the tier list. I didn't realize the tier list would actually take this much time. So uh, I'm going to be splitting into two parts. The second one will probably be released tomorrow. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy for the current analysis. I think I gave a pretty good explanation of like what they previously done these Pokemon. As well as like what they could potentially do in the upcoming format. But yeah, uh, be sure to leave a like down below as it really does help out. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the opinion so far. If you agree, if you disagree. I know I'm probably going to get some on the ground, but I still stand by my point. It's just like how I've always seen ground and how I've used it before. And it's like, how it's always been underwhelming for me. But, you know, there's a reason why it's an opinion only. But be civil in the comments down below. 
it's hard to ask as yeah youtube comments aren't usually civilized for the most part but yeah be nice to each other in chat if you especially if you have conflicting opinions but yeah have a great day people and until we bow again i'll see y'all later